March 19th, 1919. At first glance, it is a typical late evening in New Orleans. But on this night, hardly a single person can be found walking the streets. Front porches are vacant, the air unnervingly still. The silence, only occasionally punctuated by the sound of a jazz band wafting through the distance. Tonight is the culmination of a year of terror that has gripped the city. The culprit is New Orleans' most infamous serial killer. Although theories of his identity and motives abound, he was never caught. And even today, he is best known by the same name he was back then, the Axeman. Let's back up, shall we? By the late 19-teens, New Orleans' jazz music scene was in full swing. At the same time, the city was probably the most diverse place in the South, with a population that included many Sicilian immigrants. Initially, however, these newcomers were greeted with prejudice and suspicion. And what happened beginning in 1918 would shake the community to the core. On May 23, 1918, Joseph and Catherine Maggio, immigrant grocers, were found brutally murdered in their home on Upper Line Street, attacked with their own axe, their throats slit. Thus began a series of crimes that would drag on for 18 months. The crimes had several elements in common pointing to the work of a single, deranged individual. The killer would enter the homes by cutting a panel in the back door and, as in the case of the Maggios, attack the victims with their own axe. Most purported victims were Italian-Americans, and several were also grocers. Fueled by sensational media reports, the city entered a panic. Some people got rid of their axes, and men stood watch over their sleeping families, lest they be caught off guard. As panic escalated and rumors swirled regarding the identity of the killer, the Times-Picayune newspaper received what had to be its most outlandish letter to the editor ever published, claiming to be from the Axeman himself. Hell, March 13th, 1919. Esteemed mortal, they have never caught me, and they never will. They have never seen me, for I am invisible, even as the ether that surrounds your earth. I am not a human being, but a spirit and a demon from the hottest hell. I am what you Orleanians and your foolish police call the Axeman. When I see fit, I shall come and claim other victims. I alone know whom they shall be. I shall leave no clue except my bloody axe be smeared with the blood and brains of he whom I have sent below to keep me company. He goes on like this at length, claiming, among other things, to be in a league with the angel of death before making an oddly specific threat. I am going to make a little proposition to you people. Here it is. I am very fond of dad's music. And I swear by all the devils in the nether regions that every person shall be spared in whose home a jazz band is in full swing at the time I have just mentioned. If everyone has a jazz band going, well, then so much the better for you people. One thing is certain, and that is that some of your people who do not Jazz it on Tuesday night, if there be any, we'll get the axe. Well, as I am cold and crave the warmth of my native Tartarus, and it is about time I leave your earthly home, I will cease my discourse, hoping that thou wilt publish this that it may go well with thee. I have been, am, and will be the worst spirit 
that has ever existed, either in fact or realm of fancy, the Axe Man. No crime occurred on the night of March 19th, 1919, but plenty of New Orleanians did jazz it just in case. The identity of the letter writer remains as mysterious as that of the murderer. Whether it was penned by a cold-blooded killer or an out-of-work musician also remains in question. The last murder, credibly tied to the Axeman, occurred several months later, with the late October slaying of another Italian grocer, Mike Pepitone. After that, the Axeman vanished into the mists of history or perhaps the fires of hell.